peace be to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, it's great to be able to preach right after that song. Doesn't that bring back good memories of the history of the church and the beauty of the choir joining in? And proclamation is another way to say telling the story and the freedom that comes from us to ask for God's blessing in any circumstances in life and being able to share that good news with other people. The freedom of proclamation of, of God's love, God's salvation. The scriptures today unify on two themes of this freedom and also the obedience in following the ways of the Lord. And so as we go through this, I hope it's a word, these are words of encouragement to you to live with that wonderful freedom that is secure because we follow Jesus the Christ. As the first object lesson, I brought my watch I have a Fitbit watch. Do you know what those watches are? Those are watches that remind me that I sit around too much, but, uh, and they let you know that, but this is a watch that was a gift from my family, and perhaps you've noticed, maybe you can see, it has a little chain. Have you ever noticed that when I wear it? And people have asked me what that's all about. And one is, is that the chain links me to Christ. As a pastor, I am a servant of Christ, of course, that unites us, so are you, but that reminds me of my, of my call and my understanding. But it's just one link, and that is free. I am free to proclaim this message. There is nothing that can hold me back, and I have that freedom. So it's a, it's a double message. Yes, I am a servant, but I am entirely free, and the same freedom comes to you in your life to proclaim this. The psalm that we have today, Psalm 111, teams up with the Psalm 112 together that they form this basis. Praise the Lord, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. And so here we are, the company of the upright. We are the ones that come and take the time to dedicate our whole heart, not because we are so whole, but because we know of the praise that God is due in the company of the congregation, joining together. This is part of proclamation, is joining together. It is difficult to proclaim when you're a solo act. It is much more when we are in the company of the congregation. And this phrase, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. You've heard that before. I would translate that word fear into the awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so I ask you to be open to what creates awe in your life. I have a new app on my smartphone that basically shows me if I put it underneath the heavens, the stars at night, it will show me what are all the stars up there, all the constellations. Does someone else have that? It's, a, it's kind of a cool thing, right? And uh, the only thing I don't like right now is I haven't figured out how to turn off the new age music it plays as I'm underneath the stars. It's a little, a little goofy, but you know, I'll figure that out. And I, I love it. Don't you, when you look up into the heavens, isn't that an awesome experience? Or the sunrise, or the sunset, or the beauty of being here and not back in the Midwest at this time of the cold weather, or whatever it may be for you. I, I just ask you, proclamation has an element of praise to it, to praise God from whom all blessings flow. And this is a, a key. And too often we can make life as a series of transactions Today we start and we have these events and then we close out the day. It is awesome to be alive and to proclaim with our whole heart to praise the Lord. The second lesson itself in, in 2 Timothy speaks of this. The word of God is not chained. And it has to me what is a baptismal identity that gives us freedom. I've tried to explain it this way, that the baptismal uh, experience, yes, we can understand that water is necessary for life itself. And yes, it is a cleansing, there is no doubt about that, but it is actually a drowning of the old and a resurrection or a new life for us. And so this baptismal identity shapes who we are. And it's said this way in 2 Timothy, if we have died with Christ, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And that's the, that's the phrase I want. If we are faithless, 
he remains faithful. And this word faith is, uh, is all over the course of scriptures. Different ways to understand it, but I would say that what I'm working on these days is that the root uh, Greek word talks about that faith is a gift of God's persuasion. It's not something that we work for. It is a guarantee. It is received, not generated. And so it's from the Lord, and so it is a thanksgiving gift to receive the gift. Dare I say it to you, receive the gift and don't chain it up. Receive this gift of God's persuasion. And what I mean by persuasion is you take a look at your life and review your life and the proclamation Often, isn't it just amazing that in the most difficult of times is the closest intimacy with God when we cannot do it on our own? The uh, first lesson the, of Naaman and the commander of the army of the king of Aram, this is a competitor with Israel and going back and forth, and he was an able leader, but even he suffered from leprosy. And the gospel text itself speaks of this word leprosy, and it still strikes fear in our heart, doesn't it, to hear that word leprosy? It really is not all that contagious, and certainly with the multi-antibiotics now and the research of Dr. Hansen, it's called Hansen's disease because of this fine Norwegian uh, doctor who really researched it and what could be done. It, it really aren't, isn't that much, but it strikes fear because of its isolation and and the confusion would come that people would think it was an immediate trans, uh, transmission, but really it takes five to 20 years to take this disease fully on. And so it just was isolation and uh, that seemed like the simplest thing to do. And I wanted to say to you that isolation still continues to be an issue for our society. Many people don't come to church because one, they feel isolated and without the energy, but secondarily because they feel like what they have perhaps is not curable. And what that may mean in this day and age may not be so much a disease, but a sense for meaning, a sense for purpose, a reason for getting up each and every day. And I just wanted to invite you to celebrate God's love being free to touch each of us no matter what our circumstances in life are. Sometimes we respond like Naaman did Sometimes when we're gathered, we kind of expect it to be just a transaction. You could see that he was frustrated. He expected uh, the prophet to come out, Elijah, to wave his hand and cure the leprosy. Why does he have to go wash himself? He could have done that someplace else. I always think about that. You know, people come to church. No, we are the church. We come together to proclaim God's love. And even the baptism, as simple as that is, even Holy Communion is simple but profound. And in the midst of it, what, is, what healing are we experiencing? Let's see if I can finish it this way. This uh, Luke text speaks of people keeping their distance but yelling out to Jesus. And I think about this dynamic that in the needs of life, that this sense of community for these 10 lepers from different countries even, and perhaps you've seen that sense of community, maybe cardiac rehab, if you've ever experienced that. Maybe dialysis, you've experienced that. Maybe grief support groups, you've experienced that sense of community. And in the midst of that, they proclaimed to Jesus for mercy. And I think that that is a proclamation of the gospel. In the midst of your life that you can ask for God's blessing and in the most tender, in the most difficult, that you ask for the proclamation of Jesus' love for you and for your brothers and sisters. It comes at this price, though, that we understand we can't do it on our own. Our AA and Al-Anon friends have that right, right? We're powerless over this disease known as alcoholism. It is for us, we say it in this way, that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. And it's the midst of this, asking for God's mercy, that we find a sense of healing of God's love for you and for me. I ask that this is how our church views itself as both inv inviting many, many others, but also for ourselves that in the midst of the difficulties is the healing comes because God's word is not chained. It goes everywhere that it needs to go. And this reliance on this gift of healing 
is for us the way to healing, relying on Jesus for our healing. So what's a practical takeaway from this wonderful message? Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's always fun as a pastor when I say, it says your faith, but it doesn't really mean that. <laughs> it means it this way. Your faith that you received as a total gift, right? Even that is a, is a gift of God, is a way to live your life proclaiming the love of God. You may be in a circumstance this week where you could share the love of God with someone else and you may feel constrained. You may feel chained up because of culture, because of time, whatever it may be. I wanted to give a special shout out to the people of Brooklyn. Last week I visited our son Andrew and he used to live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan and that, that's a fairly uptight place. Sorry if anybody's from there, but that, people are pretty busy, at least from a Midwest perspective. But Brooklyn, people actually said hello on the sidewalk. I was really happy about that. And so in this, uh, this understanding of our life is no matter where you go, you have the freedom to say the awesomeness of God. You have the freedom to bring the love of God into people's brokenness. They're, they're absolutely looking for a sense of hope and a, a way to proclaim, Jesus, have mercy on us and bring your love and proclaim to God himself the need for healing in one's life. And I encourage you to take a step out, take a step forward, take a step towards, because we love to tell this story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, and of Jesus and his love. Nothing can stop the love of God.